good morning from Garmisch, Germany. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's see if I can see the mountains in the back. It's stunning here. Beautiful wake up, had a great breakfast. Now I'm off to Kern. Very, very, very excited. So I'm driving to Kern right now and I'm just thinking to myself in my brain, okay, let's get pumped, let's get excited, let's figure out what the outcomes I want for today are. Uh, basically, we're gonna make some Norseman knives on a Kern 5-axis machine. I am super duper excited, but I wanna be clear on what I'm trying to learn, what my outcomes are. Uh, I'm gonna learn a Heidenhain control, which I've never even touched before. Very excited for that. I'm a fanic guy otherwise. And I'm going to play on a five-axis machine for the first time in my life. I've seen them, I've touched them, but I've never jogged it around, I've never made a part, I've never hit cycle start, I've never programmed a five-axis machine. Um, I'm getting super duper pumped about that. And not only do I get to play on a five-axis machine, I get to play on one of the best out there. It's insane. I'm super gracious to be here right now. Um, hi, I'm Marvin, I work at Kern, I'm a systems engineer here, and today we're going to do some knives. So we met at uh, Las Vegas AU a couple months ago. Exactly. Yeah, excited, so let's do this. Exactly. Um, this is actually where we built our machines. You're going to get the full big tour tomorrow with right. Saunders. I'm just going to, because we want to mill today, I'm just going to quickly show you around. Okay. Um, this is basically our applications department. So this is our applications machine. This is where we are going to work today. Yeah. The machine is four and a half years old. Okay. And uncompensated. We are below two micron precision on the axis still. Uncompensated. Wow. So it's still super insane. The machine is not super clean. Uh, I left it like a working machine because yeah. this is where we daily do test cuts and experiments. So this is where we're going to work. We have our setup station here with all the tooling, yes. the tool holders, coffee for us, and I made cake. So that's the awesome thing. Um, over there, these two machines, they are to our training center. Um, our training center at the moment, they are doing like machine maintenance training here. So this is also a micro. This is an Evo. And for example, just for showing you, if a customer buys one of our machines, training is of course done at current two. We are certified by training partner. There are about 100 worldwide. And this is our training center. So here you get the introduction to the Heidenhain. We have Heidenhain controller places here. We have a big computer screen where everything gets shown. Yes. So this I, is our training center. I know nothing about Heidenhain. I don't know I, a lot either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is basically our like applications part of the facility. Then over here we have our um, production. So the smaller machines, for example, the current micro, um, they are built here in a series production. One man builds one machine. So it's not like we have a separate station who mounts the enclosure, but it's one guy starting with putting on the axis, really? then putting on the spindle, all the cabling, because we want it to be an interesting job for them and not just do the same every day. Um, after they are finished, it's like four stations there in the series production. They move to the sides of the building, for example here, and then um, the calibration the setup uh, takes place. From start to finish, so like getting a machine base in here, going through everything and going out of the door here, it takes about six to eight weeks. Okay. So that's, I think, a pretty long process. Yeah. It's about one to one and a half weeks there, and then um, the rest is just like calibration, setting up, doing the customer process. Right. You can open the door fully. This is the swivel axis. Um, swivel, of course. Tool changer is through that door. And over here is where normally you dock the automatization. Yep. Do um, you have any of those here? Not here, in the other facility okay. which we will visit tomorrow. We okay. have a machine with internal automatization here at the moment, right. but we don't have one with a big robot. But yep. tomorrow you will see the big yeah, robot. See that. Um, on the machine itself, you also have the tool changer. 
which I think is something really cool on the current yeah, machines. It it's huge. So this is nearly 200 tools. Um, and what I this, so this is HSK40. Uh, this is HSK40. And then HSK25 is even smaller than it's this. It's even smaller. It's exactly. Like I can show you. Yeah. So you've got your touch probe here, yeah, exactly. and then your calibration, calibration probe as well. Probe for the laser. And then anything else you could want. I mean, this is my this dream right here. And what I absolutely love is because we often work with very tiny tools. So um, when you have a couple of holders in your hand or on a dashboard, it's often hard to carry them. And one thing about this yeah. I really love is you can take them out, take them with you to your tool setup station, put everything in, nothing gets um, damaged, and then just reinsert them and it works. Also, a thing we do at Kern, we call it a, like the Kern connection. Okay. On a normal HSK, you don't have this notch. And what we do with this notch is, um, you have the same in the tool holder. So they are at 180 degrees. Okay. So you have a balanced holder still. And we always laser the Kern logo into it. And for roundness, it's of course dependent on in which position you put the tool in. Yeah. Because the vibration is like a sum of the spindle vibration and the tool holder vibration. And in order to get Every time you reinsert the tool, the same precision, we have these holders that snap in in a locked position and the crippers also have this notch to crimp them in the correct position and the spindle okay. has an encoder on the back. Because this HSK does not have a drive key. Nope, it it can go in in any way. It can go in in any way. But you guys are trying to eliminate that by... Exactly, yes. Okay. By at least putting it in the spindle the same way every time. Every time. Can you do a 180? Yes, you okay. can. Um, that's why we have the current logo. So oh, yeah, the yeah. operator okay. knows, it's just something we said, always current logo to the right side. The current machines are really amazed because our axis base, I mean this oh, is of great. course, now this is polymer, um, polymer concrete, Okay. but uh, the base where these get um, mounted to is actually aluminum. So inside here it's aluminum. Okay. And normally the mounting surface is steel, but the problem with steel is um, the conductivity to heat is very low. And with aluminum, we have a several times larger heat conductivity, sure. and of course, we cool all the excess. So, um, stiffness wise, it doesn't really make a difference because it's very thin, but our excess cooling is way superior to mounting it to, for example, a steel surface. Yes, and of course, you have Heidenhain encoders on all excess. Right. And it looks um, like all of these major components, new not this, but. That looks like maybe aluminum. It is aluminum, exactly. Aluminum All there. the major components are aluminum just for cooling reasons. Because we can... Well, and stiffness too, because aluminum can be very stiff. Not as stiff no? as steel. Okay. Uh, I mean, stiffness per weight of aluminum is better, but in total terms, if you have like a set working range, steel is of course stiffer. But here's a lot of FEM simulation in the machines, yeah. and they are, for a precision machine, really stiff. I mean, you will see it when we rough out stuff, the machine doesn't evaporate. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is like the new compact, more compact version. So here, everything I showed you on our other machine is included. Is this the Pro? This is the Pro, okay. exactly. Heidenheim control. Um, what you're going to do is you change to manual operation. Then you're going to move the touch probe around. So for example, with the Z height, I'm now roughly repositioning the touch probe. And then on the screen, you have the soft keys, touch probe. When I say probing position, Z minus, cycle start, feed rate up, and it's gonna touch it up. Um, the speed with which it touches is the current thing. We defined it so you can't change it. The actual yeah. touch probing is always the same speed no matter what you do the feed rate, okay. because we want a repeatability of the measurement. And then you see like the Z height and you can then enter it into preset uh, top load. Sweet, I noticed that was also a single touch, which is a yes. bloom thing. Renaissance yes. does a little double touch. Making a Grimsmo fixture on a Kern. Nice and slow while we're testing out the program. We're just facing it right now, right? Yes. And you've got an air blast, or MQL yes. blast. The first thing I wanted to check after doing that facing pass Feeling across, I want to feel if there's any steps between each movement, because on my Mori I often do feel steps unless I go ridiculously slow and light. I feel, I'd say it's 99% perfect. I can maybe barely almost feel a little step, just like surface difference, not a step. If you measured it in microns, it would be almost nothing. Very impressive so far. First cut. 
This is the classic machinist stance. <laughs> That's exactly what I do every time I prove out a program. All right, so we got the oil on for this one. This machine runs oil, not coolant. 120 inches per minute. 120 inches per minute. Listen to that. It sounds glorious. I can tell already the surface finish is amazing. 25,000 RPM, like butter. Now we're roughing out a little bit of a contour. Where the blade's gonna go, it's almost done. Look at those chips pile up. Holy cow, that's awesome. So given the uh, short notice of this trip, I didn't even have time to really plan or code or you know prep the fixture. So we're doing some of that here, a lot of prep work in that fixture, just getting it going. Um, Martin just drilled and tapped his first hole on the cairn. <laughs> it was cool to watch. That was drilling really fast. It drilled like, I don't know, 10, 12 holes in 10, 12 seconds, something like that. It was fast. So here's the fixture that I brought from home. All that work on the subplate just to be able to pop this on in the locating dowels. Well, that's great. Uh, we're also going to be able to mount the blades here on the side and do some hard milling on the blades. So Marv handed me this, uh, you know, regular, regular end mill here that they milled. This is a carbide end mill that they milled with another carbide end mill with a special coating on it. And they ground the surface on the mill using a grinding stone. That dome in there was milled and there's an M1 threaded hole in the bottom of that hole. This is insane. It's actually really nice and like, smooth around the outside. It's not sharp or anything. They radiused it really nicely. This is the track error. So oh, okay. Error is basically the difference between where the machine should be and where it is. Um, for example, the maximum track error we had right now was half a micron okay. on X during the finishing cut. Then, for example... Actually, during have, the cut, of course. Then you have, for example, spindle load, which is 1%. And load on the x-axis motor, 5%. Feed rate, and basically you see everything. Track error on, for example, the b-axis is one, one ten thousand of the tree. That's fantastic. Having an actual live data log of your machine as it's cutting while it's cutting with all the data. So it's about 6 p.m. 
Uh, Marv and I have closed the place down. We've got our little lit up section back there. Everything else is dark. This is what Kern looks like at night. And now 6 p.m. We're finally, <laughs> finally cutting parts. A lot of setup, a lot of tweaking, a lot of figuring stuff out. Ta-da! Pretty amazing finish on this. Um, there's there's always levels better too, depending on different fixturing or um, tooling, toolpath techniques. But that's pretty amazing. Um, we didn't even get into crazy kind of rotated five-axis stuff yet, but very impressed otherwise. So so far we've made half a blade and two handles. Um, learning a lot as we go. It's been a blast. It's currently 9.30 at night. Still dark here. Been here for over 12 hours. Crushing it. Having fun. The Kern Micro is quite a beast. Yeah, so now we're going to go meet up with John Saunders and Lawrence. And tomorrow, factory tour this whole place. Maybe play a little bit more on the machine as well. <laughs> that thing is gigantic. It's like your baby. Oh my god. <laughs> Daytron? Daytron. This is what Martin's personal toolbox looks like. In the back of his closet. Beautiful foam. Self-made cut foam inserts. Super nice. We gotta do this. Oh, look at all that. Man, what a super fun time. I had a current making these parts. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of screwed up the tool path right in there, so it's not actually a good usable handle. However, the finishes are amazing. It was so much fun working with Marv on that current micro. Uh, I want one so bad. And the blade, we never got to do the other side, so it's more like, you know, just keep it and look at it and look at pretty right now. Um, however, so much fun. Stay tuned for the actual factory tours. Uh, did an amazing full day with Saunders and Lawrence, checking out the other shops, and it's really cool. It's coming up soon. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.